Before I give any of my thoughts on this as a fan that, that, you know, watches this all the time, I want your thoughts as our insider on where we are right now. Yeah, I asked around the league different people, just what are they expecting? It's funny. I asked someone like, is there anything to this Devontae Adams stuff? And they're like, my man is out of there. He's gone. Uh, So I definitely think that people expect this trade to go through. I think that on Devontae's side, we've heard so much of this rumbling for years now. But now that it's really at this next level, you don't really take it to this level if you don't feel like there is a market for you. So any good agent would say, hey, like, let's ask around teams, make sure that someone is willing to do this before we really escalate it. Uh, There's definitely a belief around the league, as Adam Schefter reported this morning. People were talking to me about this yesterday, that he'd want to reunite with one of his former quarterbacks. He and Derek Carr go back to their Fresno State days in addition to their time with the Raiders, he and Aaron Rodgers, obviously, with the Green Bay Packers and Jets offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett uh, was his offensive coordinator in Green Bay. I-, I think those feel like lazy comps, but also that is what he wants. I think what's interesting to me is that, first of all, a team needs to need a receiver ideally be somewhat of a contender, because if not, why are you bringing this guy in? Which I would say the Saints and Jets both are. And then also, like, I, I was going off about this before we started recording, but when people are like, the Cowboys are asking around. Yeah, any team is going to like check in just so they've done their due diligence. It makes no sense for the Cowboys to bring in Devontae Adams. They paid C.D. Lamb $34 million a year, more than any non-quarterback who's not named Justin Jefferson. They don't need a pass help. They need someone who can stop the run and run. And that's not what Devontae Adams does. In, case, in fact, as you guys know, he was saying, like, I'm getting hit too many times. So he's definitely not coming in wanting to run the ball all the time. So... I just think that that one was a little bit crazy, but I am interested in those. And the other kind of like dark horse I'm curious about is there are definitely people around the league who are speculating about Baltimore. Baltimore would make sense. Uh, I- I'll keep doing this because I've, I did it before with this team. The Detroit Lions should be all in. Like, why not? Like, hey, you want a second rounder? Okay, we don't care. We just want to chase the Super Bowl. They, Jameson Williams has been very, very good for them. But can you imagine Devontae Adams taking snaps in that offense? All of a sudden, you go from being maybe the best offense in the league to we're talking about like 2007 Patriots type of stuff. I, I, I'm still interested. And also the fact that the Chiefs are apparently not even involved. I get it. Division rival. You don't want to do that. But maybe you hold your feet to the fire. And if the Chiefs come through and say, OK, everybody else is offering a second, we'll offer a first. I mean, you're the Chiefs. You are chasing this thir- third Super Bowl title, and you need some help after Rasheed Rice is out. We we still don't know officially he's out for the season, but he's going to be out for a long time. I don't. I get it though. That's not going to happen. Saints doesn't make any sense to me because uh, Rasheed Shahid's awesome. Like he's really really good, and obviously they have Chris Olave. So I don't really see. Look, any team's better with Devontae Adams. I get that. I don't really see that being a big need for the Saints, though. Jets make sense, obviously. So, but I don't even know where the Jets season is going after that debacle on Sunday. So it's just weird to find a fit for the for, for the Raiders and Adams here, a trade partner. The one thing that really is confusing to me is why didn't this happen in March? Why, why is it happening now? Like The Raiders are 2-2. Two and two. They're, they're certainly not bad. They're not an 0-4 team. You knew in March what this was going to be like. This, nothing has changed, and all of a sudden, both sides decide, "Oh, we're we're gonna we're gonna trade Devontae Adams." Did Devontae Adams think this team was going to be four and zero or something? Did the Raiders think that they needed Devontae Adams, but now they don't anymore? Like I, I don't know what could have changed. You could have gotten so much more for Devontae Adams in March, I think, than you would get now. That's the cu- confusing part to me. But I, I, I'm more curious to hear. What Fitz has to say about all this, because this is his Raiders kind of making a maybe making a weird trade after a, a, not, a, not a bad start to the season for them. I I know that this could come back to haunt me as a take because it did. I said I said the night before Khalil Mack was traded that I thought there was zero percent chance they would actually trade Khalil Mack. And they did. And my phone blew up the next day. But I want to bring Khalil Mack into this conversation because I don't think Devontae Adams is going to get traded. I think what's happened here is the players come in and said, I want out. And the organization says, all right, we'll put some feelers out. We'll, kind of th- we'll, we'll, we'll see what's out there. But realistically, somebody's got to go to Mark Davis. The new administration has got to go to Mark Davis and say, hey, we're not good enough to compete. So we're going to get rid of our best player and we're going to do it. For draft picks. That is the exact sales pitch that John Gruden made when they got rid of Khalil Mack, who, by the way, has been kicking the Raiders' ass twice a year ever since. So now you got to go to an owner and say, sorry, we didn't do this in March for the new GM, Tom Telesco. you got to go to the owner and say, sorry, we've already spent all this money, but the best way we're going to get better is with a 
second round draft pick and maybe some other stuff. If you tell me that they're going to get Garrett Wilson in return, sure, that, that trade makes a ton of sense. You're battling for the future. I understand that. That's not what this reality is. So I'm still looking at the sales pitch to an owner where you've got to go in and say, hey, the way we're going to get better is to give him to somebody else. That's why I absolutely don't think you can trade him to the Jets because then you got to go to Mark Davis and explain why as an organization you weren't in on trying to get Aaron Rodgers in the first place. Instead, now you're sending Aaron Rodgers what he needs to get a Super Bowl. Like, you're going to send the Ravens who you just beat a couple of weeks ago. Were now you're going to send them a key. at all or they didn't get him? That, that, they were barely in on Aaron. They weren't in on Aaron uh, enough to really be part of the Aaron Rodgers sweepstakes, right? Like you're going to send him to Derek Carr after you let Derek Carr go to help Derek Carr win. Like I just keep thinking about Mark Davis in the room for every one of these conversations and I can't find a way it goes through. I, everybody's told me I lost my mind, but if you're telling me a second round pick, you're telling me that they're going to go to Max Crosby and be like, hey man, I know yet again, we're going to make life chaotic for you. And yet again, we're going to suck, but we're going to get a second round pick, which is typically what? a starting offensive lineman so that we can hopefully try and get the ammunition to move up for a quarterback next year. Like that's not a sales pitch to your stars, to your organization or to your owner. I don't think it's happening.